We got a really good show for you today. Um, we got a few topics for to cover. We got um, the old becomes new, old retro styles coming back into into fad, and then just the big three having some issues, yeah, some maintenance issues, yeah. And then get your tin hat ready for though you conspiracy oh. theorists because we got some good stuff. I don't know. How to- Everybody, I'm Kenny. This is Chris. That's Bryce, and this is the American Car Classics Radio Podcast. Hey, I'd like to say thank you so much for tuning in today. We do hope that you are doing great. We are here in the beautiful sunshine state of Florida. A couple of good old boys hanging out, and uh, Chris, the weather it's shaping up. Man, um, best time the, of year. The hot Florida summers are gone, and we're starting to get a little bit of cold fronts running through. We got a little tropical storm out there that's going to come this week. They say it's going to bring some rain on Wednesday. We're okay with that. There's no eye to it. There's no disaster going on there's no snow with it there's no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I bet, uh, I bet people are getting snow up north already and all that I, that's crazy would, so my daughter Gianna and she's in Colorado she's in the military and thank you G yeah and she's Fraser. been dealing with snow for the last two three weeks uh, Colorado uh uh Deion Sanders they won on the Saturday this they weekend did. uh yeah, yeah. your Maybe Tennessee volunteers I Chris I got something for you this week I wanted yeah. you to be able to hang out of the wall because it was gonna be a I huge win Ah, so he said, uh, I said, we can't hang this unless they're going to win. So um, that's going to that's gonna sit down for a little while. Next week. The Florida Gators won. Hey, I'm really happy about that, man. Uh, uh, they're not having a great season, but they took a win this uh, week. was a good win against LSU. I was happy about that. Yeah. So uh, that's about all the football stuff we're going to talk about. I think Bryce, Bryce Shanka, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. You're wearing a Cadillac racing shirt. Yep. What is that about? Cadillac racing. Well, formerly Chip Ganassi. And now uh, Wayne Taylor is going to be taking over the team okay. in IMSA next okay. year. And so that's going to be an interesting switch. Look, we're going to do a little something about IMSA sometime, Bryce, because it does cover a lot. And there's a lot of technology in it that gets used in other racing aspects. Oh, definitely. It's crazy. Well, I mean, the prototypes, I mean, just love them all. Like Formula One, they have a hybrid drivetrain um, that's relatively new just in the last uh, few years but um yeah so i mean that's they're you're exactly right they're pushing the technology and um that class is really really growing i think they're adding a couple more manufacturers next year so um yeah imsa races are great if you ever have a chance i'm going to the daytona 24 this year it's it's an amazing time if you're anywhere nearby uh, it's you know the stadium. It, it just runs for twenty four hours. Yeah, you waking up cracking a beer at seven thirty in the morning. Yeah, twenty four hours. Hey, Tony, you went last year. Yeah, I went last year. And, a lot of uh, fun. It's it's in, it's incredible. You playing a little bit better this year. So uh, yes, playing a little bit better this year. Good time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be uh, staying closer than an hour away. You got two time. tickets. I you don't need to really worry about the tickets. The tickets don't sell out. No. Yeah. No. But um, no, it's 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 an amazing event, and I, I highly recommend it for anybody who's a fan of uh, car racing. It's if you haven't seen sports car racing before, it's a whole different thing. Um, it's more like a festival with yeah. with a race going on at the same time. And four so. years ago, I got to work in a pit crew on a, a senior car in the HSR twenty four hour HSR, um, and uh, it was an experience I'll never forget. Uh, crashing cars, pulling out front clips, changing transmissions on the fly. Uh, two laps at Daytona, you can do this and then send them back out. And uh, what a what a treat and joy. So, um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. So uh, we're gonna get right into this week. I think we've got a couple of things we wanted to say to our yep. to our people real fast. Yeah. So, but I do want to say thank you to all your subscri- all of our subscribers. You guys are absolutely amazing. We a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, we said you know we're a small channel, but not a new channel, and we asked for your support, and you guys answer the bell uh, pun intended because we noticed that um, a lot of you aren't getting notified that we've released a new episode or a new segment or anything like that. So less than 10% of you even know that we have put something new out. And so here's a free thing that we're giving you for all of our subscribers and non-subscribers as well. You guys are included in this. There's a bell notification right there at the next that subscribe button. Now, now the, ones that, the ones that are like me that aren't tech savvy, this is no, I'm not a brain, it's not a brain thing. It's it's a no brainer. It's right there. It's yeah, like right ringing there. the bell at Arby's. If you, you walk out <laughs> after you have your cheese sticks and your cheese melt, you ring that little bell and they say, thank you. It's so awesome. It's push, push what? This the bell notification right How there. Right next to it says subscribe. Right there, subscribe, and it says, then there's going to be a bell. You click that bell. And with then, your mouse. With your mouse. Okay. And then you, whenever you open YouTube, you'll see us. All right. 
Well, it's that easy, guys. And then that way you can deter- determine if, at that point if you want to see us or not. But at least you'll you'll know that we have put out a new episode for your viewing pleasure. Yeah, listen, we are doing this based on stuff that we've heard from you all, the rhetoric and feedback that we're getting from you that that uh, through the internet and everything else that is is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make videos that you are interested in, that you want to see and learn more about, and, and that's why you turned us on and subscribed in the first place. So we're doing this for you all. So thank you for tuning in, and please continue with the comments because that's what gives us info on what we want to put out there uh, to lace to you guys for the next show. So again, thanks a ton. Yep, absolutely. Thank you guys. I appreciate right. it. So first topic, old becomes new. Like we talked about, you you, you brought it up a couple of shows ago. Yeah. Um, rest, resto mods and how everybody is, you know, taking everything that was old, resto modding it, not making it even remotely close to what it used to look like. Um and making it what they want it to look like. Well, I believe the big three of manufacturers have taken wind of that and taken notice of that. And they're actually trying to give the consumer that off of a, a production model off the showroom floor. So they've reinvented the Chevelle, the Monte Carlo yeah, yeah. and the El Camino. And look, before we get into this, I want to talk about it for a second. Maybe, maybe add a little something. A resto mod. Where did this, where did the term even come from or how long ago were people doing? I certainly, they were making the muster mobile way back and all that stuff. That was really kind of crazy that, that there's, we had a way out, uh, uh, character cars and stuff, but Art Morris is a leader in frame and chassis design, and he's been making frames for a long, long time. A 57 Chevy came with an old X frame. It's not good for anything that you want to do with horsepower, gripping, traction for tracks or any of those things. So you go and you buy a custom frame, and that's the first step in custom. I make it a resto mod because now you're developing this to put an LS or a small block or a big block or a hydrogen or whatever you're doing. But that way, way back, 30 years years ago was starting off doing this by putting a new suspension underneath that gave you a whole different handling car uh, and everything else. It's just evolved into this where now resto mods are taking all the yep. high numbers. Well, you almost think all the high numbers until the very end there, but, but because <laughs> that's I mean, a restaurant that, mod. is it? Yeah. Was, it a, was it a different frame and all LS. that? Okay. So yeah. All right. Well, we'll continue on. So, so, so anyway, it's just taking something that. it's, you know, numbers matching used to be the thing and there's very few of that now. And so people said, screw it. I don't want to even deal with that headache and I'm going to make it what I want it to be. Yeah. And so like the, the new Chevelle. Honestly, I think this thing looks really cool, man. I really do. It has a six, 6. 2 liter V8, 650 horsepower, I did not 0 bring, to 60 in 3.5 seconds. I didn't bring my sunglasses. Chris, <laughs> That you found the brightest picture in the internet. Oh, man. It's beautiful. Now, disclaimer. Yeah. Some of these images are hard to find, and I'm not an insider. We're not insiders. We're fans, just yeah. like the rest of you yeah. guys. Um, and so if... If you have a, a better image that is actually more representative representative than uh, than the ones I'm about to show you of these models, yeah. please by all means share it with the class. Yeah. Um, but that's the the one the Chevelle. We have another one of the Chevelle, another green one, and we oh. can't really. There's people around it, but the the paint job on it almost looks AI ish. So I can't really tell. Yeah. But it. But both of them oh, kind of yeah. look I, similar. I'm looking at the crowd now a little bit closer. And, uh, Are they AI? That's, that's an AI job. Yeah. Sure. Oh, man. But I love the color. I'm wearing green. Tiana dressed me today. Her favorite color is green. Every car, I feel like Richard Rawlings. Everything is green. Everything's green. <laughs> and, but, but the two renditions we have are green, but totally different scapes of them. This one here doesn't look, the rendition looks totally different than it, it the does. one we just looked at. Similar. But I love this color. Can we go back to the other one? Yeah. The thing I like yeah. about this. Well, that's got an old style scoop, the cowl and everything else. Yeah. Where the other one was more modern cut. What do you like, Bryce? The colors remind me of Days of Thunder, the first oh, yeah. car that he was in. Yeah. The, the city Chevy. The mellow yellow. Yeah. Mellow yellow, yeah. That's right. I always liked that paint scheme. Yeah. Great movie. But if the, the production model looks like that, man. They're going to sell out. They're going to sell out. People, um, you know, it was growing up that I didn't want to be the Camaro or the Chevelle guy because they, that's what they just, that's what everybody was ducking on and, and running up. So that's why I went with the Monte Carlo. Um, uh, this guy I used to know that used to call him the grandpa sled. Um, I, I beg to differ, man. I always thought that Gem 1 Monte Carlos were great. And that's one of the next ones that are coming out. Yeah. Let's just take a look at it. We got one. Ah. 
It's a Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like Camaro. And like I, I told, I told Bryce and Kenny earlier, it looks like a Camaro and an Infiniti G35 had a baby. What? It does. Uh, Cause it has the Camaro front end, but that G35 like hit in the middle in the hip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're seeing here that they're, they're doing the flare. Now I didn't notice on the Chevelle. I do not think it had the side flare, like, like what the we're going to see, the wide body, like what we're going to see on the uh, on the El Camino. They're going to jump into the El Camino now. There's another shot of the Monty, right? Yeah, the wide body Monty, and and, and I, I can see it now more this way. But to me, there's zero take on the Monte Carlo. They did not no, follow the body line. No, no, no. They did not make it a long nose or a long trunk at all. Uh, I think the that's name. The, the same. The wheelbase is um, as as everything else that's going the Chevelle and what have you. Well, they phased out the Camaro, at least for now, right? Yeah. I, is that gone? I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's what I've heard, you know. But that's, that's just a Camaro Carlo or something. That's, you know. Camaro Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Trademark that name. The Monte Mero, right. I'm going to yeah, register uh, that website right now. Yeah, yeah. right. You should. The Cam- <laughs> the, the, what did I say? The Camaro Monte or Camaro Carlo? Camaro no, Carlo. Like we yeah. said, if you guys have anything oh. better than what, what we have, and you know, I looked quite a bit, and this is the best that I could find on, on the old Googles and the interwebs. Um, if you guys have anything... Please let us know. We'd love Rendition to see it. Wise? Uh, yeah. Yeah, right, right. Or factual. Like if you have, you know, if you're yeah. an insider and you've seen something. Yeah. Share it with the class. Yeah. What about that El Camino, Bryce? What do we got for that? Because uh, this one here, there was a shot that I really dug. Uh, I dig that, man. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. I dig no vent window with the little kick window in the back, Bryce. They're not making it square cut off like the old El Caminos were. It's wide body. They're giving that little notch and they're keeping that a little bit longer. You could take it to the track or you could move a fridge. Absolutely. I mean, you could take it to the track with a fridge in the back. Uh, I wouldn't want to try to turn with a fridge. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you happen to be going home back from Lowe's and you saw a race, you could race them and then get the fridge right home to Honey before anything was really mm-hmm. bad. But I like this that... Um, I, I said the wide body to me brings me back to the old Porsche days, but this, I like it. I like, it doesn't look ridiculous on it. It looks purposeful almost bringing it out. But on the cars that were now are the bodies inside the same width as what the other cars were. And they're going wide on the body for sure. Or they shortened the capacity on the bed and the cock on the cockpit, you know, by, by, by doing the flare. And I just don't know that answer, but um, yeah, we'll um, I'll know until we see one. Well, I think you've got these modern kind of truck hybrids, like the Subaru Baja. You have some yeah. different examples lately where like it was just enough truck bed to call it what it, right. you know, a bit a truck bed. Right. But right. it, it was still uh, short enough to to sip around a little bit. Yeah, we got another one here. Well, it's not a truck, you know. It's, it's it's certainly the trucks are all factory higher and they're all in twenties and everything else. So that's, not, I hope now this that, is not it. Now that that uh, has to look to me like a truck. See how much higher the gap is between the wheel and tire. That to me says says the new Silverado something, but it is a four door. And this looks less like an AI generated image it, um, it does. partly it's because the the people in the background are not facing the car it looks more like you know car executives milling about yeah. uh, talking to each other well, so. what is the logo can you see good enough on the on the chevy is that say el camino i can't tell yeah I, it I doesn't say silverado it does not say silverado all right so we're, we're here again eh? you know everybody if you can help us yeah. out with a little bit of information on that stuff we find this stuff we throw it up there but this does not look as much like a computer generated uh, picture because people are actually conversing not paying attention focus on the car there's a there's a stage and everything else in the back for people to talk to so now this one's a four-door yeah it is a four-door but it's higher it's not even a full four go back to the other one go back to the other Look how much lower the wheels and this tighter is, this on this. This would, in my mind, be the best That El would Camino. be an El Camino. That's this correct. Feels more like what we're going to yeah, see. Yeah, the yes. other one looks like a bastardized Ranger or something. Well, it looks like a pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another rendering in there, too, I believe. That's, yeah, that one, the cartoon the yeah. cartoon version. That is a cartoon version. Uh, uh, certainly a, the snub nose I'm not a fan of. Yeah. I'd like to see them pull down that sport I nose. I still like this better than the four-door version. I like this better than the four-door version, and this does keep up with the same window cut and everything else. I love the sport mirror. Maybe this is the drawing they used to, As a concept, for the, for the a other concept, rendering. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I don't know. That'd be cool. Well, yeah, they, um, they I, change the model several times in yeah. clay before you ever go to, you know, fabbing apart or something. I know, because like a, a lot more car, truck, are kind of come, but Subaru's got their version of like a four-door car with a bed on the back of it. I don't know what it's right. called. I'm not a Subaru fan. Well, Tia and I went to breakfast this morning at Dottie's and we saw a uh, four-door truck. We didn't know what it was. Tia and I went over and investigated with Dooley and found out that this was a Silverado that was an electric Silverado, four-door with a, with a five-foot bed. Very short, four, okay. four feet, eight inches, whatever they are. But uh, it looked like um, um, it looked like an avalanche. Yeah. Man, it looked like an avalanche. But it said Silverado, the E was, was, a, was blue. Electric blue. So we know that that was a, an electric yeah. vehicle, but it looked great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the looked smaller great. trucks are, are doing pretty well. I mean, the Maverick, Ford Maverick's doing pretty yeah. well. So yeah. a lot of people like them. Yeah. They really do. Um, yeah. And last but not least, and we don't have any images, but we, Bryce may, if he's feeling frog, we'll throw an image in here later on and post. But yeah, they're overrated. Um, the new Chargers, you know, they had a big reveal uh, last year. They got all kinds of hate. Depending on how you feel, rightfully so, or maybe not. <laughs> but they have they got rid of the Challenger, which was their tor- two door sport offering, and then yeah. they used to have their four door sedan, which was the Charger. Yeah, um, they got rid of that, and so now the ch- they have they kept the Charger, but made a two and a four door option. So the two door you can either get a gas or an EV version. The gas two door would be five hundred fifty horsepower. The EV two door would be six hundred seventy horsepower. <laughs> if you opt for the four door, you're still getting four hundred twenty horsepower, and that's and a gas V8. Now so, that's, that's Dodge's new one. That's that's I Dodge's. Don't, I don't think new. we talked about the General Motors power plants. They're 6.2 liters. Yep, yep. I brought up 6.2 liter V8. And they're 600, doing 650 horsepower. 650 horsepower compared yep. to the 550 uh, from Chrysler coming out. But I know the Charger isn't an old model coming new again. Nope. But what they are doing that was old that they're making new again is they're offering a single model in a two and four door version for our younger viewers Which is that may cool. not know this in the seventies and sixties, that was very, very common. Yeah. Um, and this right here is a 1979 Ford LTD. And fun fact of the day is this is the last model that was ever offered in a two or four door version. And after 1979, they didn't do this anymore. It was either the model was a two-door model or it was a four-door model. Right. And so kind of bringing the old back to new again. So I want a charger, but I I have kids, so I'm going to get a four-door charger. Yeah, they used Um, to make a four-door Chevy Nova like a two-door, but they never did that in a Monte Carlo. Thank God. (laughs) I would never have wanted to see a four-door Monte Carlo. But they did it with Impalas. They did it with everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Impalas was very, very popular. A very, very popular cruising sedan um, in the 70s. So, yeah, that was your, your old becoming new. So, I think, you know, the big three by doing this, you know, they're trying to get people to come back to their models, right? And I think one thing that they're doing is they're they're playing on tried and true names. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, okay. But they're doing it without really any other improvements outside of the name. And I say that because, you know, the the reliability on the big three, you know, Ford and Chevy and Chrysler Dodge, they're, they've been terrible. Yeah. Since, since right at the pandemic, 2019 to current day, absolutely terrible. I mean, we're going to go through all three, the manufacturers here real quick, but Ford, and we're not, I'm not placating to say I'm a, one over the other, but Ford, these are all news, led all manufacturers in 2023 with 54 recalls. That's the third year in a row 54. that they've led in that category. <sighs> they've led in recalls for three years in a row. Now, you know, we Look used to know that Ford had a, 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 a test track. Ford used to have test drivers. Ford went out and beat their cars up and they drove them hard and they drove them good. And this is something that is frustrating to me as a consumer that, that we are now the test pilots for cell phones, <laughs> uh, for, t- for everything yeah. that's mass produced and shoved out to us before it's properly tested. That we are now buying these cars, which people are buying them to get to and from work. Yeah. And then this thing is brand new. You're expecting, hey, I've got seven years of not worrying Look, about anything but an oil change. You would think so. So they're one of their most popular motors, their EcoBoost. And then so here's the issues are EcoBoost, EcoBoost engines, their tra- transmission failures, and the F-150 axle problems. Bryce just put that logo, uh, that image back up. There you go. 90,000 vehicles affected with their 2.7, 3.0, and 3 liter EcoBoost engines. 
Wow. Those are all their commuter type, you know, those aren't high performance engines. Nope. No, this is just mom and pop driving around, getting to work. They're in a lot of vehicles, these, and, these EcoBoost motors. And so uh, rental cars or the family inconvenience or how long are we waiting on parts? We talked the other day uh, about some EV guys that are doing these cars. They're waiting months for parts. We, we probably aren't doing any better on the, on the ice engines and the, and the drive lines that are, that are traditional. And, and we just, you know, how, how are people able to do this? This is kind of, you know, not cool. It's not cool. It's not okay. <laughs> it, it, it's not. And then the transmission failures. Um, and I have some news articles. I don't know if I have the Ford one or not. Um, yeah. Is it this one here? Yeah, there we go. Ford and Lincoln recalling nearly 91,000 models of their 2.73 liter. This is their EcoBoost. Right. Recall affects 21 to 22 models with those engines, including the F-150, the Bronco, Explorer, and the Edge. I mean, those are all their top sellers. The Lincoln yeah. Aviator. Yeah. Uh, Nautilus are affected as well. So Lincoln's, uh, Ford says the issue involves faulty engine intake valves that may fracture and fall into the combustion chamber, causing catastrophic failure. Wow. Now, man, I'm not even going to the other story that I know you've got lined up here in a bit, but it frustrates me that you can buy a standard base model, non-horsepower, non-try-to-race anything, whatever, go out there, drive it, do be doing normal stuff and have it just come apart because of lack of testing on their new design. Yeah. They, they used to say, Bryce, it was always a thing about don't buy a first year model because it just was too new and not right. You, we didn't know enough about it. So don't be the guinea pig. And the EcoBoost has been out for a while. Yeah. They're not new. At, they well, started the with solar is, drops. It's been out for a while and it was also in the 4GT that they were running at Le Mans. So that thing was at wow. maximum capacity for 24 hours straight. Um, you know, it was just, that was the whole reason for Le Mans. It, in the beginning, uh, decades and decades ago, was it was manufacturers proving that their design yeah. could hold up yeah. over running it hard for 24 hours straight. Like Honda at Indy. I remember them building and testing well, and doing so. Well, well, and I'm not a NASCAR fan by any stretch of the imagination. My dad is. And I remember growing up and him watching NASCAR and all that. But wasn't the old adage, you know, win on Sunday, sell on Monday? That's absolutely right. Because they were right. a stock car. Absolutely. And back in the day, they were the car that you could go to the showroom floor and you could buy. So much to your Le Mans, you know, uh, you know, uh, um, story there. I think it was the kind of the same thing for the Americans, right? You know, you had your NASCAR, you'd see them like, Hey, I need that Monte Carlo yep. thing was awesome. It won on yep. Sunday, right? Yep. So yep. yeah. And sports car racing is getting back to that. The lower classes now are very close to what you can go and really? buy. Good. They're okay. homologated. They have a couple of, you know, transmission and brake changes, but it's, yeah. it's the car. But, yeah. but we're into eight and nine speed automatic transmissions now. I mean, I, oh, I sit there with these new Corvettes and I drive them and, and you can't feel them shift until you're into fifth gear. Yeah. They're so smooth. I, I love my, Lucy, my Nova. She, she throws you back in second gear every time. But, but when, when Tyler built the transmission for me, I said, I want to I want to crush your second gear. Yeah, and every you, time you, you threw, feel you, it when you it comes out of first. Yeah. And, and I just love it. I, that's my, 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 my thing. Yeah, I mean, that was some Ford issues. Here's Chevy's. Not much different. Chevy no. transmission issues. No. Most recently, um, yeah, nearly 500,000 pickup trucks and SUVs. General <laughs> Motors on Wednesday said, now this is from November 13th, so just a couple of days ago. General Motors issue, I said on Wednesday, it was recalling 462,000 diesel engine and SUVs and pickups because of a faulty transmission control valve that may fail and cause the rear wheels to lock up, <laughs> increasing the risk of a crash. 20 to, 2020 to 22 Chevy Silverados, 2020 GMC Sierras and Cadillac Escalades, so I Tahoe wanna, I, Suburbans, Yukons. Oh, my gosh. And that, that was for their diesel ones, right? But they also had a recall of 450,000 trucks um, for, for transmission issues for their other ones, their gas-powered ones. And they sold 450,000 trucks. Yeah. Guess how many they sold in 2023? I mean, I, I'd hope, I, I, I guess a couple million, right? Yeah, I mean, 754,000. So over half of their trucks. Over, well over half. You had to get recalled for transmission. And so what are they doing to upgrade this? Is there, is, is, <laughs> have they come up with a fix? Or have they been massively produced, producing these since they got, look, it starts out with a TSB. Before a recall happens, they start out with a TSB, which is called a technical service bulletin. And this is something that you all, as a consumer, don't really hear lots about. But we start as a business, as a shop, a Dolphin Auto, 
we start to get notifications about these technical service bulletins through our software that we have to we pay for to help us analyze and fix your cars. So uh, this is something that we learn about early on. And as the protocol gains momentum uh, from the consumer that this is not just a bulletin anymore, it becomes a recall. And then notices go out to the consumers and you hear about it on your morning news, which is where I hear most of the stuff about recalls and then come in the shop and look at it and Sure as heck, man. We've we've seen some atrocious ones, but I wonder how long in advance does the 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 manufacturer know that they're going to have to go to a recall. How much production are they doing before it? Because when you get your recall, you you call in the first one, your first one, and you get in the queue. Otherwise, you're waiting yeah, you're months. Waiting. Maybe yours hasn't been effective yet. Now you're driving it differently, gingerly. You feel it. Oh no, am I something? But you've got to yeah. get in that queue for that recall, yeah. or else the wait time could just. And a lot of these kill recalls. You. Outside of like the mecha- mechanical ones, but a lot of these recalls are software related. Yeah, there's electrical problems, fuel system problems, Chevy engines. These this will hit the headlines of one of their reasons for recalls: head gasket and engine failures. They're blowing head gaskets. And in today's world, multi-layer gaskets, all the technology, you're doing everything else. I mean, you can rev these things harder. The tolerances are tighter. So to have that kind of failure in something that is as common as a head gasket and head bolts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of the, the Ford uh, recalls were software related. There's tons of software related because most of these cars, are just, you're driving a computer. Well, uh, now same the time, with Chevy. Yeah. And, the timing you know. is based off computer stats and everything else. There's yeah. no more distributor camshaft reading and all these well, things. It's really cool. I have a friend who has a, a, a Tesla, one of the SUV ones. I don't know. I was talking to him about his Tesla. So, it, you know, recalls. They had like 12,000 Teslas recalled recently. It was a software issue. Okay. He's like, he's like, what's cool about those with the with Teslas at least? Um, they don't have engine failures. You don't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to take it in for the recall. It's all over the air. Yeah. Oh, they do the updates. That was super they cool. do the yeah. updates remotely. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Um, okay. But getting back on top of here. So can't leave out old Mopar. Chrysler Dodge, right? So they had the second most recalls in 2023, 45. Um, and they, in my personal opinion, since the land is bottom in 2021, they just been junk. And, and I, I, drive, yeah. I drive a Ram. I'm a Ram guy. I'm a Mopar guy. I've had, I've driven a Ram since 1997. Yeah. Now Ram became its own company. They are their own company. And so the thousands, they've, thankfully they've, that did solve a lot of Ram truck problems. In my opinion, like I said, I've had a Ram since 1997, starting in 97, I had the early 2000s. I have a 2017 now. Right. But I think when you break it away and you let it become its own, something you can yep. look at it better. Oh, absolutely. That's why I think their trucks effect, are a lot right. better, but this right. is, you know, this is affecting their trucks because they're having engine issues well and maybe not so much all in their 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 pickups but dodged in their cars those hurricane yeah. engines yeah have been just crap they're just they've been recalled tons of them tons of software bugs most of the stellantis ones and i think i have a service bulletin or um, a notice of what the customers are getting from ram and um and it was all about their oh the 1500s powertrain control module software updates yeah now you wonder that that's something they got to go in and reload a software update on as for Tesla. You're saying it's doing it all remotely. Um, I know that, that there's a lot of telecommunications go, goes through that you can do, you, you know, my spectrum cable, they send a, a signal to my router and stuff. Um, I wonder how long before these, these all look at that and start saying, we need to be able to communicate with your, with your car off, off lot and do an automated up, say, updates and stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of a, a, the thing with new cars as well. So it's good because all they're all new cars since I think 2019 are now gateway service enabled. Okay. So they communicate, you know, with, uh, this kind of, this kind of leads us into a, the 10 it, hat. It section. almost does. It almost does. Before we leave this one, can yeah. I, yeah, Talk about the controversial elephant in the room for yeah. a second. I love elephant controversy. Elephant or, or donkey. Because, <laughs> donkey. Because <laughs> uh, we are now <laughs> a few years into what can be called the get woke, go broke era. Okay. And there's a guy named Robbie Starbuck who's been going through these American companies, uh, Harley Davidson included. Yep. And exposing uh, the kind of woke nonsense that's been going on. And in a, one of the tenets of what the woke pushes for is hiring people based on identity 
especially ethnic identity or group identity, yep. rather than merit. Right. And ah. I know this is real because I've sat and watched a corporate training that literally said, if you're hiring people based on merit, that that's wrong and you shouldn't do it. Do you think that maybe when you got all these different companies having systemic problems like this, that that might be an element? You know, yes. you can't rule it out. You can't rule it out. I mean, that, 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 I think it's so, so many things that lead. I think I saw. That, that have to lead up for it to go so bad. I think I saw. For all three, the big threes to just go so bad. Yeah. Our, our new vice president, Vance, he, um, he, he came out on the podium one day and said, I'm going to get in trouble in the next four years trying to be so politically correct. We've got to kind of cut back on this and pull back on it and get back to communicating and letting things just be the way they are. Sometimes things aren't pretty. Sometimes things are ugly. You got to put it as that. You can't always just put lipstick on a pig and make it better. Qualifications matter on a person. 100%. I'm 58 years old. I never interviewed over a computer. I went into a restaurant. I went into an auto repair shop. I went into whatever I did. I met somebody. I talked to them. I gave them what I could give them. And I said, this is who I am. And they hired me. Or they didn't. A couple of you lost me. <laughs> but uh, no, but it, it, it's, it's, it's hi- not hiring off of merit. Doesn't seem to me that's a total turnoff. Well, I just feel like we're, I, to me, it seems obvious if it's this widespread amongst this many companies that have yeah. been around for this long, yeah. there's some there's a culture issue common thread that we can look at. I mean, it's not even just cars, Boeing. Oh, yeah, my, and, and I know somebody. And I, I'm in the aerospace industry. That, yeah, right. Uh, but Boeing goes on strike, and they they've got so many troubles going on. And this morning <laughs> on the news, Spirit Airlines announced bankruptcy. Really? Absolutely. I they didn't did. know that. I didn't see that. There's my shocker for Chris. Woo, I got one. Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Crazy. The, and I'm in the aviation industry. Um, I remember when Boeing went on strike, I was like, good, save some lives. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, the Airbus, man. I mean, just the, you know, and, and, and the way that. I have friends that will not fly if they see it's a Boeing on their. Oh, on I think their, there's a lot of people like reservation. that. Man. Wow. They'll see, they'll see it's a, a Boeing. I'm like, nope, I, I want a new flight. Wow. That, that's no I'm joke. not worried about flying. It's way safer than cars. And and I talk about uh, comebacks. I, as a business owner in the automotive industry, I hate a comeback. Nobody's getting paid twice for this <laughs> except the mechanic. So uh, uh, it really frustrates me. But um, airline mechanics don't have comebacks. Well, we have what's called repeat recurs. Yeah. But if you lose a plane. Yeah. yeah. Now, mechanics get fired? Yeah. Okay. okay. I, mean, I don't know what happens if you work on a plane and it... You can go to jail. Okay. Yeah. See, so that was the big thing. So I was an aircraft mechanic wow, we're for, talk for about over 20 later. years, uh, for those of you that don't know. And so, yeah, absolutely. Depending on what it is. So you have to sign off. It's called a safety flight. You would sign that off saying that this airplane is good to go. Um, Meaning that you put your wire through your bolts. They yep, can't say back. You, I mean, say, all the- you, say you changed a hydraulic pump, right? And then you there's documentation that goes with that. And then somebody installs it somebody inspects it. Somebody signs it off. It's safety of flight issue. That's all good to go. All four of those people you just said. It's two. They, Usually just two. Well, Sometimes your, three. Your mechanic. So you have a mechanic that will remove, install, do the maintenance. Yeah. And you have your inspector that comes okay. and inspects it. But they're all, they're both signing it. Yeah. 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 So it always fall, usually falls on the inspector. Sometimes it'll fall on both depending on what what it, the nature of it but let's say for this co- sake of argument that i inspected it i signed it off and it wasn't done properly and it was gross negligence yeah and absolutely i go okay to jail. right absolutely go to jail yeah unbelievable so, i mean yeah that holds accountability it makes you a better mechanic yeah i should start doing that in the automotive industry <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's just so it's insulting really. And then yeah. the thing, here's the thing, cars cost so much more now and your quality is so much less. And to me, that's just, yeah. that's just rude. No, no, absolutely. I mean, I, we're pissed rude. off as consumers at these prices. I tell people, man, you just bought that truck at $75,000. I bought 25, 30 years ago. I bought a house over in Largo, Florida for 76, three bedroom, two bath, one car garage. I mean, come on now. Yeah. I know inflation is something else, and I know in October we're up another two point six percent. That's going to be changing too. And, and while I say that elections are over and we're free of a lot of things, so we're we're happy about maybe Should where the outlook's going to go. Right direction. But but car pricing, 
car parts, everything with it have just blown up. And and I am tired of trying to tell customers that spark plugs are fifteen bucks. Did you did you read my next segment? You're talking about car prices and no blowing up? Haven't even done it. So we were talking about the gateway, right? Yeah, not, not cars not have to be Lewis gateway Park. enabled yeah. now. Yeah. So they are sharing your data just like your cell phone shares your data. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, but they do. And here, they'll just go down this journey with me. Right okay. Now. Are we rabbit holing? Uh, maybe. Look, I told, oh. This is where you put your tin hat on. Okay. Quick, okay? All right. Seatbelts so, installed. I read this. I found this article. And I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I will share a little bit. It says, bad news, your car is spying on you. Um, if your vehicle was made in the last few years, you're probably driving around a data harvesting machine that may collect personal information as sensitive as your race, your weight, your sexual activity. Volkswagen cars oh. reportedly know if you're fastening your seatbelt and how hard you're hitting the brakes. The worst of these offenders are BMW, Ford, Toyota, Tesla, Subaru, that all collect data about a dr uh, drivers, including race, facial expression, weight, health information, and where you drive. Modern cars use a variety of data, har data harvesting tools to include microphones, are you? cameras, and the phone that the driver connects to the car. The worst offender, like I just was uh, with BMW and them, but Nissan is the worst by far, it says. So I bring that up because there was in the news a couple months ago of a Toyota GR Corolla. Now, GR, I'm almost going to feel like that's a race car. It is. It uh, is their, like... I mean, it's a high performance. Yeah, their yeah. high performance, uh, you know, Toyota, Corolla. It's, it's made, it's like a, like Bryce call, call it a rally car type, right? That's pretty much what it is. It's a small engine, um, <clears throat> boosted, uh, turboed, uh, lightweight. So it's meant to perform, right? So yep. It's going to yep. handle, it's going to cut the corners, it's, it's going to accelerate. It's going to take off like a rocket. Okay, right on. So two of them caught on fire. We got pictures of the fire. All right, so a car catches on fire, man. Cars two, catch on fire all the time. Two GR Corollas burned down. Toyota right. won't honor the warranties. What? Toyota won't honor the warranties. Why? Nope. So I think there's another another. Uh, Tuners wash their cars and. Yep, that's. That's a complete burned out car. Th yeah, that's one of them. So yep. what's happening here, Chris? So, the. Toyota told the owners the same thing. It was almost a copy and paste. And I have, I actually have Toyota's response in there that they're saying that there it is. Uh, nope, that's not it. There it is. In response to your concerns, a vehicle inspection was conducted on June 24, 2024. The last reported odometer reading was 23,000 miles. 23,000 miles this thing burned yeah. to the ground. Yeah, broken. Broken. All right. At the time of the inspection, the vehicle had fire damage to the front of the engine compartment because it set on fire. The yeah. inboard side of the engine block had small hole in the upper side of the internal engine damage. Oil residue was found at the turbocharger at the bottom of the engine of the undercar undercarriage and exhaust pipes. The owner's manual warns not drive in excess of the speed limit. Even if the legal speed limit permits it, do not drive over 85 miles per hour unless your vehicle has high speed capacity tires. Driving over 85 may result in tire failure, loss of control, and possible injury. But none of those things happen, Chris. Be sure to consult your tire dealer, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they said they're not going to warrant it because they know he was driving over 85 miles an hour. But they're sitting there saying that these, look, I'm taking that guy to court. I'm taking him to court because you're talking about my tires. My tires didn't fail. Uh, tires not only not that, that stock tires for these cars are rated for over 85 miles an hour. Okay, well then that's a that's a dumbass statement. Yeah, I would suspect you couldn't even buy a tire for that rim. You can't. I'm, I'm telling you. It was not a performance you tire. You can't. You can't. You, you can't aftermarket. So, so here's not the factory. Thing. They're not going to do it. I'm just using this GR Corolla. We can go down the rabbit hole with this GR Corolla, but now that everybody's car is connected to the gateway, now everybody's data, personal data information is being shared with whoever they want it to share with. Now, when you download an app on your phone, you are releasing data rights. You're yeah. Saying, yep, we're going to let you collect this. We're going to let yeah. you collect that. Cookies. When you buy a car now, that's something that you're actually signing for when you buy the car. Now, you can opt out. I looked it up. You can opt out of this data harvesting, but it's so buried in the fine print to opt out. I don't know that anybody thinks to even do it. I think the first time that people, the story came out that I recall, not as a technician that I knew about how much what stuff goes on and does um, through, through bus and all that, but that Tiger Woods wrecked his SUV. 
And when they pulled out the PCM, they were able to disclose his highest point of acceleration, how long they were, were they on an incline, um, all the stuff uh, that, that went into it, geometry, uh, turning throw, all that stuff. And that right there told me, man, Big Brother's doing a lot more <laughs> than we think he is inside of our cars. Because yeah. I can go back and screenshot and all this stuff and look at, at, at captured data and stuff like this and all this. But I'm really going in there to look for drivability issues and all this. They, they're, peeping, they're peeping on you. Yeah, absolutely. And then if they're going to use that to not honor warranty claims... Now, we all know, like, I have a Harley-Davidson. You put certain things on Harley, they're going to void your warranty. Oh, yeah. And cars like do it cars the same way. And, right. So now, as an auto shop owner, an independent technician, it's going to be harder for you to start working on these newer, newer cars, right? So that's the table squeaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's the neighbor up to right yeah. now? <laughs> little, old, our old... But... um. So you're going to have, so you, and we, we went through this. There's, you know, there's uh, subscriptions that you're going to have to pay for now. Yeah. Software subscriptions, hardware, certain computers, certain tablets, yeah. just to plug it in, put it in yeah. maintenance mode. Yeah. Um, Coming faster than we think too, guys. Yeah. Um, and here's, here's the other thing. If, if they realize, Toyota realizes, Hey, you know, you, you did this maintenance and then you did it improperly, according to our manual. Yeah. We're not going to, we're going to void this guy's entire warranty, even though you just did a brake job. Yeah. It has nothing to do with his water pump that went bad. Yeah. I got to come from the other side, though, too. Uh, you know, I'm not a Toyota diehard fan or anything, but I have owned two in a row. And the company does a ton of things they don't have to do. Um, to make the entire experience better. So I would kind of suspect that this is a bit of an anomaly and that they'll probably correct course. Um, it was two different with, with, people. The exact sure. same copy-paste answer, the exact same car, sure. the exact same problem. But that doesn't mean that whoever's responsible for that uh, uh, communication is not finding a new job and oh, right. updating 100%, their resume. 100%. Right. But the other guy, the second owner who whose car burned down had 7,000 miles on it. Right. I mean, and yes, I'm not knocking Toyota. I think they're no. one of the premier auto manufacturers out there. I'm just, and I wasn't even using, they're just kind of setting up my story of the, the amount of information about us and how it can be used to yeah. not benefit yeah. us. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a lot. It's a ton. But like the uh, insurance company, I don't want to give you your money back. I, I want to, you know, argue this and dispute and make sure that we have, you know, who's really liability and where and all this. So that's probably just a very first opening response. I think that right. they're going to feed into uh, the customer's rhetoric back, come back. It's going to be a BS statement or you know, like a, they're pissed off BS and, and calling them on it. And then they'll yeah. negotiate change and whatever. But the more that come out now, this comes out, Chris, and they, they stockpile two of these guys, then 20. That now it's a technical service bullet, and then 40 and 60 and 80 and 300. And now it's a recall. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, you, you yeah. just got to dot your eyes would, and cross your T's. I wouldn't and want be to ready for that. To burn down before right. I had to do a TSB. No. I would well, be. When's it going to kill somebody like the Takata airbags? You know, yeah, well, the first guy that happened to me, he was going driving down the highway, right? It's caught on his dash cam. Like he was driving down, the, it, it just, he Started had to pull foiling. over and just right. engulfed in flames right. within seconds. It's on YouTube. It's a pretty cool channel. Um, but yeah, it's going back to the gateway, they have an image of like how the gateway actually works. Uh, I don't know if it, Bryce can find it or not. Nope. Nope. That's a toolbox. <laughs> this is a cool one though. Oh, I yeah. Got it. There's the gateway. Yeah. So you have this computer, goes to a cell phone tower. They're collecting all your stuff, so it has your service data, has your fuel consumption, has your luck, all everything. And ECM been, have been, ECMs have been in cars. No, but the speed, 70s. oil condition, mileage, emissions, uh, failure warnings, and they're they're telling you, uh, it's telling on you. It's it's, it's storing your information. Telling on you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Are there any are there any uh, examples of where authorities have used this data in uh, to charge? Um, somebody that they thought was doing something wrong while they were driving? Well, in, uh, I, in go, what way? I go back to Tiger We're, Woods. They're looking to see if he was speeding. Was it was it his fault for insurance purposes? or Was that liability? the insurance company, though, or was that the law enforcement? I think it was law enforcement, but all the information that comes out in a case is fed to law enforcement or through law enforcement to insurance companies that they can pick up and say, hey, I don't have to insure him. I don't have to pay this claim. I don't have to, yeah. based off the case findings. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, so. and I know you everybody, like if you sign up for insurance, if you have recently, they all want you to plug this thing into your car or yep. they can just get it off your cell phone, but you have to opt yep. in for them to order to collect that data. Yeah. Yep. But nothing says like to Bryce's point, if, if there's an accident or something. I mean, there's subpoenas for all kinds of things. You yeah. Can, you can, if something With happens to your house. If so, you, but Tiana just got a new car and, and she went out there and, and she got by, by State Farm. They said, look, this is, you, you, you don't plug this in. It's, it's got a mercury switch or whatever. It's just based through your phone. It's based through your phone. So she is now being narked on, uh, narking on herself. And, but they said, listen, we're not. We're not penalizing you if you drive poorly for this. Here's what we're going to do. You, you plug this into your car. You let us watch how you do. We gain information about the masses, but and also women and demographics and all that goes into it, but that you get to um, get one percentage point off of your bill by having it. Now, that's the minimal. If you drive good and are a good driver and all these things, then they give you up to 10% off on your insurance bill for having this. So there's an incentive to it. Maybe. But is it worth it? That's what they're pitching. They're pitching the incentive. I haven't right. wanted to do it yet. But I do have to say that, uh, you know, this is kind of shocking stuff. And, and people who don't know about this are probably right now a little yeah. bit surprised. Yeah. But cell phones have been doing this for a very long time. 100%. Yeah. Oh, we know. They know way more about you than you could possibly oh, yeah. understand. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's a real issue, too, because you can't use your phone without agreeing to a terms of service, which allows for all this stuff. Yeah. So either you agree to it happening, and nobody reads the 20 pages of nope. the terms of service. That one, yeah. So either you agree to it, and you r remove all liability from them, or you don't use the phone. And well, everybody is, uses a phone. This is why we voted down on amendments three and four and stuff. They just throw so many things on top of what is yeah. a good idea or an, a needed idea or something, and, and they want to control or watch or do or be, and it's just not acceptable to us, the consumer. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. My question is, I still have my tin hat on, right? I'm just playing devil's yeah, advocate yeah. here. It's all I'm doing. Yeah, so if it's such a good thing, why do they bury it? Why, why don't you tell me? Say, so, hey, this is what I'm doing. When, I, when you sign, when I'm signing for this car, hey, we're collecting your data. It was like, oh, it was in there. It was read in there in these these ten pages of of paper that I gave you that you can't read without a monocle. Because sometimes it's egregious, Chris. Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely <laughs> right out. It's absolutely foul. egregious. Um, but, they, but everything that they say is good for you always comes out of out of a guise of you know or bad. Something that bad happens always is a guise of it was good for you, right? And so I, I, just, I don't trust it. We're only doing this for your protection. That's it. Chris. Right. We're doing this no, for that's your it, Bryce. Protection. That's it. So No, it's, uh, it's a jagged pill to swallow. Um, we are forced into these products. You can't live without a cell phone. You can't do business without a cell phone. Um, well, we were talking to Chuck, your tech, yep. your lead tech. Yep. And there's a thing called Auto Authority. Many Chuck you, Williams and his wife, Serena Williams. Give him a shout out. Yep. You may know that this auto authority, so um, this has already been implemented in Chrysler and Dodge, but you have to be a subscriber in order you know, with their software yeah. in order to work on their newer cars you do. for an independent shop. So yeah. you have to either go to the dealership or you, if you go to an independent um, mechanic, they have to pay a subscription fee, which right now is very nominal. Um, but in the future, you can see that they, you know, they can hold uh, the independence to, hey, you're going to pay me $100 a month. $200 yeah. a month, $300 a month, $400 yeah, we, a month. We've been battle, We've been at battle with things like Jaguar and stuff for, for pr proprietary uh, release issues and stuff where they just don't release a ton of information. So you have to hope that you are good enough on the, on the previous cars or that you can see similarities between these and what's going on in other cars that you've been able to diagnose. Uh, if not, then you're paying an outside source to come in there and it's controlled by the dealership. So I said to you and, and we were talking with Chuck, how long is the life of the independent repair shop going to really be around? And, and, and the truth of the matter that in 2024, Dodge is already doing this. And by 2026, uh, Chrysler, I mean, uh, uh, General Motors and other companies are going to yeah, be coming into this do it. where we're going to have to buy that chip that credit card, debit card that is going to be good for two days or, or a lot of time period to get the diagnostics done and the new burn into your PCM. Yep. Um, we are a rural shop or so I am told I'm in a town called Grant, which is small. No, no um, cookie cutter restaurants or housing developments or anything like that. 
And for me to have an alignment machine, it isn't worth it. For me to have this technology to come in and buy this, it isn't worth it. So I'm going to depend on an outside company called Illatech that comes around and they do all the updating software and all that stuff for us. We pay them. The price gets passed on to the consumer. Look, it's 180 bucks for me to call them to come on out. And I'm going to put a put a 20% markup on that. And I'm going to charge my customer $240 to come out and, and have this software installed and updated in it. And, and I, I bring this up because it all comes full circle. What do you do? You know, the big three have problems. They need to be worked on. We've talked in previous episodes that people are keeping their cars longer because they're so expensive and you can't just trade them in. Yeah. You know, somebody bought a hundred thousand dollars suburban. Now it's worth 50 and I'm not making that up. That really happened. Yeah. Um, a year later. Yeah. And so you're, you have no choice, but to keep your cars longer. Now you can't work on them. You take them to the independent shop. who's always going to be cheaper than a dealership. The, the, then, auto, their auto, the auto, uh, advanced auto is going out of business. 700,000 stores seven, across 70,000. Is it seven? I, got I think, think. seventy thousand. It's a lot. Yeah, but that's yeah. Still, there it is. It doesn't have me a number. Hundreds yeah. of stores in an effort to turn business around. Yeah, but that kind of surprises me. The fact that people are keeping cars longer, but yet Advanced Auto is going. So is it just bad business practices on their part? Look, you can't even do rear brakes on a lot of cars today. Yeah, you had to put them in maintenance mode. Electronic control calipers. Yeah. You and this is, this is a very difficult thing, but not all cars are allowing you, the consumer, to do that. Right. So it takes a lot of the, them. You have to have the, a, you have to machine, plug right. it in. So put one, it in maintenance mode. To one thing about your brake pads. Uh, advanced auto parts that I do know, and I mentioned to you uh, pre-show, was that they owned this company called Whirlpack. They bought them about six or seven years ago, if my memory's right, maybe eight. Time flies when you have fun. Um, and they recently sold them uh, because I heard that they were not doing so well in the business. I don't know if it's the commercial side that's hurting them or if it's the retail side, but they, I don't think I see as many of those buildings as I do O'Reilly's and AutoZone. They advanced? Yeah. Okay. So I think I think it is just that there's a trend of, of how much commercial you put out and how good your jingle is and where your location is to the masses that you are getting those first bitten. You think about Palm Bay, where's there an advanced auto parts? I drive by one every day. You do? Yeah. It's on Malabar Road. Yep. Yep. And there's another one right next to Charlie's, right across from Mima's Barbecue on Babcock. There is. But yep. it's a teeny little store. Other than that, I don't know of any of I can name you five O'Reilly's. There's one of Wickham and NASA. Yeah, that's way down Melbourne. Right. Yep. So in between, in between Babcock and, and Palm Bay Road and Ellis and NASA or Wickham and NASA, how many auto zones do you think are there? I'll bet there's three. Probably. So it's just a difference of what's out there and what. But um, yeah, advanced auto parts, man. Uh, in, in, in our lifetimes, right? So I think we've seen a few, you know, car companies go down. Um, you know, uh, one stop and all those, they get bought up by other ones, Western Auto, stuff like that. They all uh, get small enough. They got yeah. bought up by somebody else and then swallowed. I bring, you know, like I said, I bring it up kind of full circle. The old becomes new. Yeah. You know, there was yeah. new technologies back in the seventies that freaked people out and yeah. they didn't like it. They didn't want to see it. They, you put a computer or an MI, it's, you know, fuel injection and ECU You're yeah. putting that on. What is this? So we're kind of there again, you know, and then put your tent hat on and cars are having issues setting on fire. I'm, how many vehicle fires do we have in the seventies? Right. Well, <laughs> you, you, you got a guy that's got an old car, but he wants to go fuel injection, fuel injection. So he's going to get a, a Holly sniper on there. Yep. Uh, shout out to Todd Byron. And, um, the, uh, the Holly sniper has now got a little computer with it. And it you're does. now, so now you've entered the world of computer stuff. When NASCAR went to EFI, they put a PCM in their car and it started changing the world of NASCAR. So, I mean, you know, yeah, everything is going to, it's going to change. It's not all doom and gloom though. I mean, right. We're the beautiful thing about humans is we're very adaptive creatures. We have to be, we don't um, get to change our skin color like a chameleon. We don't get to grow our toe back, our tail back, but we no, are, we are very adaptive. No, no. So what else you got for us for now? So you, you know, that's, that's all I have for all the tin hat right. stuff. My tin hat is now removed. All right. Um, you sent me a video Saturday night when I was watching my team play. And this was amazing to me because it caught my attention. I'm watching Tennessee play, and this that was big enough to, to take, take my attention away from that. All right. This was a, and Bryce has the video of it going across the blocks of Barrett Jackson. It was a 1986 uh, Blazer. Yeah. $270,000. Yeah. For this Blazer. 
Yeah. It's a quick clip. You got it? You don't have it? I don't have it. Oh, man. We'll put it up in well, post. We're going to put it up in post and, and go in this. But um, um, this caught my eye real quick. Uh, I have a customer who is selling his all original K5 Blazer. It's an 88 model. Uh, we've done a lot of work to it, but it is beautiful. We've run it through Barrett, uh, through uh, Meekum twice, and um, it didn't hit reserves either time. Although uh, I think reserves were 44, and we brought 37 maybe the second time. But, um, you know, it, it, when you, gosh, and we get into that where we got fooled last show on that Corvette, yeah, three hundred three hundred grand thousand um, dollars. You can go so far <laughs> that it does pay for itself. But do you think that that Donald Trump's apartment is going to sell? for what it costs and to put all the gold into the place, even though it's Donald Trump's probably not. And so you have to look about how far do you go to get your money back? And what are you going to do if you don't? And how do you swallow that when it costs you 300 to build it? And it just sold for a hundred. I mean, you're calling your bank and you're filing bankruptcy. I don't know how to do that, but, but this kind of money, damn right, they made money. Unless they were living on Starbucks and 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 and, and Krispy Kreme, they made money on this thing. Oh yeah, and um, it looked great. It, it did. looked great. It looked great. LS powered, but know. it wasn't something that was just like 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 the Corvette. You know, it was that Corvette was dope. That yeah. was sick dope. This was it was a blazer. Some of them are just crazy on what they yeah, buy. It was, it was really look, cool. That's amazing. Really that's cool. Amazing. That was the last little shocker I had. I thought right. it was well, super awesome. I want to take over from there. Yeah. Talk about, some... about Meekum coming up real quick. Uh, Meekum's going to be coming show. up. Next show, yeah. right? Well, we got, I, I look, we've got vacations coming up and you're going to be gone. You were gone last Turkey day and, coming up. And we got I got to go to Turkey, San Diego. Right. And Bryce is leaving for a few days. So we're going to figure out our next show dates. And so I guess I'm going to have to change this stuff because uh, I've asked Jacob Fairchild of, of Jasper Engine Transmission to come in December 5th. And so maybe Jake and I will do a show without you with Bryce if Bryce is in town. But Meekum is a show that's coming whether you're in town or not. Uh, every year at Kissimmee at the uh, Osceola Heritage Park, we have have Kissimmee come into town. Uh, we have Meekum come into town into Kissimmee, bringing over 4,000 cars for sale. Um, this is going to be January 7th through the 19th, two weeks. Um, you have not been to Meekum Auctions? No, I had COVID the last one. That's time they right. were coming. I was supposed to go yeah. there the last time and I so, got COVID. Well, that was a miniature one. That was a summer spectacular. But this yep. one here, this is every snowbird is in town. Uh, you've got phone line bidders going off a dozen of them at least. And the, the electricity it is spectacular. I can't wait to get out there again. Man, uh, I love being out there. Missed I it over the summer. It. We had so much fun. So we're going to have fun. John Craman on, right? We are going to have John Craman. He has uh, said that John Craman's going to come on uh, this January. Uh, he's going to come on December 19th. I think Bryce, you're out of town for that one, so we're going to be figuring something out on that one there, um, and and handling all. No, this no, that, that one, that one's clear. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, we've got John Kramer coming on. We're trying to get a hold of Matt Avery with uh, Meekum Auctions and get him out. Uh, he's a fan favorite with us as well. Uh, that we go out there and talk a lot about the cars on scene and and all that. His insightness and and everything else is so beautiful to know. Um, Kenny, you you watched something on a dyno. I did. We got, well, Dolphinado has a customer name. All right. So uh, Rob Veris, give me, give me this camera right here real quick. I'm going to talk to Rob for a second. Rob, listen, uh, about, about a year and a half ago, we got to put a pro charger on your Corvette. Uh, it's a C6, uh, 2014 model. And it, it was just stock car. I'm out on us one. I get to drive some cars pretty fast out on US-1. Um, Brevard County Sheriff's Department knows me. Um, as long as I'm not you know, trying to kill somebody or look obvious doing it, they excuse a lot of that, knock on some wood. So what, what I get to do is I get to go out and road test these cars before and after. And I drove Rob's car and um, it was a Corvette. It, you know, they hug the road. You feel like you're in a go kart. You're down low. You feel great. Wah, bah, 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 paddle shift. Let it naturally shift. Whatever you're doing, uh, his is a stick shift. I prefer that in this situation. But in a street car, I want to. I'm an automatic. But in this, I get to feel it shift. And I just made a comment earlier that in the new cars, you sit there and you don't even feel it shift until you're getting the fifth gear where the momentum is finally starting to kick in and jerk you around a little bit. I drove his car and I came on the show and I said, yeah, it's just, 
just a normal car. It, wasn't, it, it didn't impress me much. I, you know, Beyonce or whatever. It, it wasn't all that. And and he watched the show. And it's surprising who watched the show sometimes. So <laughs> Rob came, he, he texted me and he said, man, what are you talking about? My car, it's a dog. What? This is not okay. I had you put the pro charger on. <laughs> what happened after pro charger was well, I went out and drove it again. It didn't really feel that much better of anything else. I wasn't really impressed. It didn't Marilyn Monroe, my skirt up. So he went and got it tuned. Um, they didn't really do any adjustments on it. So it really didn't really give him what he wanted and everything else. So a year and a half of playing with this and Kenny, I got a little of this, I got a little of that. We tried this, we tried this. We found, um, an exhaust gate valve that wasn't right. Uh, he's got the headers on the car with a full stainless system, high flow cats. Now everything else on this car, we took it over to Bryce Kumis racing. Bryce is right here in Palm Bay. And, um, it, we, we were getting established a relationship and I've been over to shop a few times and, uh, Bryce, I got to take the car over for a dyno run. I think we got some video of this thing. We do. You ready? Yeah. Super sick. It's going to be at the end of this. So, okay, uh, great, great. So uh, this guy, Bryce, sat here and he did um, a total of 14 meters. What it's all about. And then he let it completely cool down. He's got a big fan of the front. He's got a big fan of the back. You can see it through the reflection of the rear bumper. And he was snapping this thing at high throttle. He was running them hard. He was getting what he could out of it. He was adjusting the tune each time. First, he finished the air tune. Then he goes back to the air tune. Then he goes back to the air tune. Then he goes to the air tune. He's going to go to on-time for injectors, which we call pulse gas. He's going to go back to the air tune. Then he's going to go back down again, six or seven runs later. And then he's going to go back and finalize this. Listen, 700 bucks. 700 bucks. It was fun to watch. It was fun to go down there and talk to them. Have a good seat. So here's the sheet for Rob. Rob, we, we came in at 479 horsepower, peak peak horsepower, max torque of 503 foot pounds uh, at at what 485 at um, at engine RPM uh, 4.5 uh, 4.5. So he came out max end of the done uh, 592 horsepower. I left. Bryce said, "Hey, I'm gonna try and get this thing over six with it." I think he ended up stopping at the 592 uh, peak performance with 560 foot pounds of torque, uh, an increase of of over 100 horsepower. Now I went out and drove the car. Um, I, I text the customer back and he asked, uh, Rob asked, you know, how, how the car was done. And I typed him one, six, eight. And he asked, um, I, I got your text, but I think it was something missing. What was one, six, eight. Uh, I went 168 miles an hour in your car out front of Dolphin Auto on US one. That was pretty impressive. It was a lot of fun. So his car is no longer a turd. It's no longer like any other average Corvette. Rob, I love your car. It's fun to drive. You're going to bring it back for some paint work and I'll get to drive it again. It's my way of having fun. It's I don't wake up with coffee. So um, thanks for sharing that, Bryce. That was good. Glad you guys got that up there. Yeah. Uh, Bryce really Kumis cool. Racing. I can't believe you're going you guys. that fast. You need a racetrack. Yeah, 168 miles an hour uh, out on US1 to do that. Um, I just had a visitor come out. I'm going to make my chair available. Come here, Dilly. Come here. Get up oh, here. Oh, special guest. Get up here. Come on. You want to. Come on. <laughs> come on. Special oh, guest. Here's my puppy, S. Dooley. <laughs> Hi, baby. So, um, yeah, so while we're doing this, I want to get into a little bit of stuff to close out with um, that we hadn't talked a ton about this year. I didn't get to follow along with a ton on, uh, which was NASCAR. 
Um, I have a, a deep, deep seated love for old school NASCAR. Um, Dale Earnhardt, I've got my, my three on my sleeve and I wear it proudly. Um, my other tattoo is a Mighty Mouse tattoo, which I actually got um, afterwards, but I wanted first before Dale's death. That was for Alan Kowicki, uh, who was a Pollock uh, from Wisconsin, became an engineer and decided he wanted to race NASCAR. And when he, when he won his race, he drove his car backwards around the track. We're like, what, what is this guy doing? This Polish victory lab and stuff but um old school nascar is so fun to me um it w- they've gone to this championship race how they've changed the points around and what they do differently and everything else now and they went into uh their points playoff and they had their top 16 their top 10 8 and and they get down to their their top four uh william byron uh ryan blaney tyler reddick and alex bowman except alex bowman's car as he made the final four failed post-tech inspection and and uh, he got kicked out, and Joey Logano, who had gone back to his car hauler, was changing out, was announced that he was in the final four and going to make the, the playoff out at um, cool. Phoenix Raceway. we got Raceway. some photos of it. Uh, and then uh, here at Phoenix, it turns out, and Joey Logano, man, what a race, uh, kind of like the chick fight at the Tyson stuff. Um, it was awesome. And uh, he won the whole championship. He's a three-time um, NASCAR champion, which there are only four of those out there other than the seven-time winner. Winners of uh, Dale Earnhardt, uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson, and and uh, Richard Petty. So super cool. Um, speaking with NASCAR, I want to go into something and say that um, last week we lost Bobby Allison. Um, this is a name that goes back to me a long time. I've sat, I sat with Bobby Allison three times in my life and got to just talk. Um, the first time I ever met him was at his son, Davey's funeral. Uh, Davey died in 1993. His other son, Clifford died just the year before at Michigan raceway, uh, testing a car. And, uh, for him to lose his two boys was hard on him. Uh, but he always maintained a great ambassadorship for NASCAR and, and, uh, was very, very proud of the heritage of the sport and everything else. Uh, we loved it all. So, um, I, I, you know, we bid adieu to, to a great NASCAR racer and uh family man and um dad and uh all those things so um just wanted to to say you know that we appreciated everything that the allisons were able to give to the sport of nascar and to to all the fans around that 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 enjoyed that so thanks a ton for uh tuning in today absolutely again always a good time we're gonna ask you guys to please uh subscribe Hit the like, especially if you like, if you like Dooley. Yeah. <laughs> he's the best of the best. He is. He's awesome. So, um, we're going to come up with a QR code soon. Yep. We're going to have, we're going to have all kinds of cool stuff coming up, man. I mean, we're just, just scratching the surface of what we're going to start giving you guys. I mean, this isn't it. This is the beginning. This, yeah. is, this is just the beginning. Well, the next couple of um, shows, I'm going to get back to some tech talk where I get to talk about, you know, how, how smart I am. No, um, we're going to find out what, what's been ailing you all. I've been getting some stuff in. So we'll start compiling some of those uh, informational things yeah. and, and see what's going on with the cars that, that people have got some questions we answer. Uh, we've got new segments coming up. We've got new stuff coming up. We're in the wheelhouse, Chris. We're talking about a lot of different things and we're going to be bringing some different stuff in and, uh, yeah, that, trying to change it up 1960 MG that content's almost on it's on the Man. horizon that that 60 MG is looking really that's a, good that's so a Dolphin far. Auto build that's uh, been sitting in a barn for 34 years you and I got to pull it out yep we pulled it pretty out cool. that's pretty, pretty cool awesome. we so, have all that on video yeah. that's it's gonna be pretty awesome yeah all right well uh, thanks for tuning in we appreciate you yeehaw come on back all right high five <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.